God blesses you, don't let it change your attitude to the house of God and don't let it change your wealth. It's attracted to those who respect wealth. What you don't respect, you don't attract. Lift your Bible. Say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It has the power to change my life. And it has the power to change the lives of the people around me. I believe in the Word. And the Word works for me. And will continue to work for me. This, this end of year, every promise of God for my life, before the year is over, will be fulfilled for me. In Jesus' name. Wave your Bibles and shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Now, before I took my journey, or in the last time, we spoke about, or we started speaking on money with a mission, of prosperity with an assignment. And I mentioned four reasons why we built this dome. How many can tell me two of the reasons why we built this dome? Somebody tell me. Choir, anybody tell me two of the reasons why we built the dome? Yes. House of prayer, two. I said two. I didn't say one. Two. I want to be sure you got it. Yes. House of prayer. Somebody here? Yes. Oh, I didn't hear you. Place of celebration. I wanted two. When you get up, you give me two. Yes, DSP. Place to raise leaders. Okay, to equip the saints or raise leaders. Amen. Okay, so quickly let's, you know, the first reason for this place is a place of celebration. Say place of celebration. The second is a house of prayer. The third is a place of equipping the saints. Oh, let me hear you. A place of equipping the saints. Or raising leaders. Number four, a place of raising money for evangelism. Oh, give me an amen. Amen. If we're going to raise money for evangelism, it means that people must be raised who are wealthy. Amen? And that will be your story. You had the testimony of the gentleman. He said, the bishop has always been saying that God will give you, bring you into millions of stuff. And he said he's entered into his own. Your own is coming. I said your own is coming. If God has done it for somebody, it's a prophetic indication that he will also do it for you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19, the Bible says, A feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry. But money is the answer for all things. And so the last time we looked at what riches are or wealth. And then I think the service. So in the, in the next one, I spoke about other things. Let me quickly give you a rundown of a few things. Poverty. Putting poverty in the spotlight. According to the dictionary, poverty is being... In a state where you are with competent subsistence or you are, a, you are begging, you are destitute or in distress. And if you go through the scriptures, you don't see anything good the Bible has to say about poverty. And the Bible never says anywhere that poverty is a virtue. Poverty is not any virtue that you have to imbibe. Poverty, even though it's not a sin, but it's bad enough if you remain poor. Amen. It's bad enough because you can't help anybody. If you are poor, you lack sufficient money, or you live below a standard that is considered normal or comfortable in society. The dictionary also defines that the poor person is living worse than the usual way he should live. There are four things the Bible says about poverty. Four things the Bible says about poverty. And I'm just going to mention them. The first thing the Bible says about poverty is that poverty is a destroyer. 
poverty destroys. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15, says the rich man's wealth is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. So the poor man is his poverty that destroys him. May you never be poor again. You didn't hear me. I said, may you never be poor again. There are many people whose destiny have been truncated because of poverty. And that will never be your story. It will never be the story of your children or your children's children. Your destiny is changing. Tell somebody, my destiny is changing. Amen. The second thing the Bible says about poverty is that it demeans. In Proverbs 19 verse 4, the Bible says, Wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. Poverty demeans you. It makes you go, it makes you, people look down on you in life. Number three, poverty reduces your influence as a person. Poverty reduces your influence as a person. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9, verses 13 downwards, says, This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city, and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. There was found in it a poor wise man. He by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. However, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Poverty doesn't add anything to you. In fact, when you are poor, your influence is limited. You can't even have money to campaign for elections. You can't build a clinic. You want to build a school you want to build. You can't even invest in the business you have to uh, invest into to make it what it should be. Poverty is not anything we should be proud about. Number four, poverty makes you a slave. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7, it says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. The rich rules over the poor. And that is why you and I want to be people who live an inheritance for our children's children. Amen. The truth of the matter is that if God wants you to support his work, then he's going to empower you to be rich. Your amen. It needs a top up. The Bible says it is God who gives us the power to get wealth. And so you are going to be rich. You are a covenant child, you are going to be rich. But as you get rich, remember this in Deuteronomy 8:11. It says, Beware that you forget not the Lord your God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command you this day. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and you have built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when your heads and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. He says, when you build, not if you build. He says, when. So I prophesy to you as a prophet of God, and I say that you will build those houses. Your businesses will increase. The contracts will come to you. He says, when? And so it's going to happen in your life. But he says, when those things happen and your silver and your gold is multiplied, that means your money will increase. Your investments will do well. Wherever you suffered loss of investments, today there is a restoration. A change is coming into your life and in your situation where your investments are going to give you returns like never before. You see, God is going to so empower you, he will guide you that you will make wrong investments. Because it is God who teaches you to make profit. You won't make wrong investments. He says when your silver and your gold is multiplied, don't let your heart be lifted up. If tomorrow morning you are the man or the woman who commands millions of dollars, don't let your heart be lifted up. If you were an usher, still be an usher. If you were a prayer warrior, let's still find you there. If you were playing the instruments, still play the instruments. No matter how God blesses you, don't let it change your attitude to the house of God and don't let it change your attitude towards God. 
if you can hear me, give me a believing amen. It's important to remember that wealth, it's attracted to those who respect wealth. What you don't respect, you don't attract. Quickly today, let's look at six reasons why God gives us wealth. Six reasons why God gives us wealth. Amen. Number one, God gives us wealth to establish his covenant of wealth. God has a covenant of wealth and is the first reason why he gives us wealth. He gives us power so that we will make money. Amen. He gives us power according to Deuteronomy 8.18. The word power means divine ability or enlargement. And from today, may God so empower you than ever before. Whatever empowerment you received last week, may what you are going to receive today be more than that. Amen. Whatever increase God gave you in the previous week, may this week be different. Amen. So, he gives us the enlargement or the divine ability. When we receive this kind of power, we don't struggle. The days of your struggle is over. Because how can it be said, it is not by might, nor it is by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, except God gets involved in it. Now, if human beings on earth can contract with Satan, and Satan can empower them to get sick and drop, I came to tell you that Jesus paid the price by his blood. You have better blood. You see, when human beings want to get sick and they have to use their relatives. They have to use somebody to sacrifice to Satan to get that. I tell you, God wanted us to get money. And so he used our relative, our senior brother Jesus. He sacrificed him so that we will have blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The precious blood of Jesus. That blood is speaking for you. All the money that belongs to you, may the grace of God bring it into you in Jesus' name. Give me a believing amen. amen. Tell somebody my life will never be the same. When we talk about this power, we are talking about God's creative ability to accomplish something. Whatever you must accomplish in your life will be accomplished in Jesus' name. This power is the insight or sensitivity from God to do a given job at a particular time in a particular way to make wealth. And that is what is going to happen to you. Where people have failed, you go in there and suddenly you begin to get results. Where people couldn't succeed, suddenly you go in there and you begin to get results and it will work for you. Because wealth is having more than enough. That includes your material items like finances and everything that money can buy. And that is why God is giving you the ability to get wealth so that you establish his covenant. In fact, God made a covenant with Abraham and in that covenant, God promised to bless Abraham's seed. And he went on to promise to bless the world through the seed of Abraham. Now, as children of God, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, it says, and if you be Christ, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So, because you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you are Abraham's seed. If you are Abraham's seed, the Bible says you are an heir. You are somebody who inherits the promises. May the promises God gave to Abraham that he will bless him and he will be a blessing. May all those promises be fulfilled in your life. I said, may those promises be fulfilled in your life. Amen. That deserves a rousing amen. amen. And so once you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you accept it, then God is under obligation to make the covenant of Abraham or the covenant of wealth that he had with Abraham be established in your life. Amen. Every Christian as the seed of Abraham is destined to prosper because of Christ Jesus. But some are not prospering. And the reason is, you know, Kenneth Hagin tells a story of a woman who served this governess. The governess was very rich in the UK. And in the days of Charles Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, Charles Spurgeon had a very powerful church in London. 
And this woman was a member of Charles Spurgeon's church, and the woman was dying. And so Spurgeon went to uh, visit with the woman, and while Spurgeon was visiting with the woman, he saw on the wall this certificate that was framed on the wall. And, you know, it had become dirty with age. And so Spurgeon said, can I take a look at this uh, certificate? The woman said, yes. And so Spurgeon took the thing down, uh, removed it from the glass where it has been preserved. And when he read it, it was a will. The will was entitling this woman who was dying in poverty and in a shackle, this woman was entitled to all that the governess she lived with had. Because before the governor died, the governor had willed all her property to her. But this woman took that certificate the uh, uh, governess gave her. She thought it was the last thing her, ma- uh, 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 her governess gave her. And so she was preserving it and didn't know what is in it. And for some of us, this Bible contains everything that will give us our inheritance. But for some of us, we are not getting into the word. And as long as we don't get into the word, my Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Whatever destruction the devil had meant for you, from today it is being reversed in Jesus' name. Because from today you will get into the word. Tell somebody I will get into the word. Like never before. Tell the person sitting by you, watch me. Next year by this time. You will be amazed at how much wealth I will have. You will be sitting by me, but you will know how much I have. Because God is dangerously going to bless me. Give the Lord a believing amen. But that means that we must behave like Abraham. And Abraham was a faithful fighter. Tell somebody Abraham was a faithful fighter. Oh, you remember how Abraham gave to Melchizedek or Melchizedek. Not only was Abraham a faithful fighter, but Abraham was a liberal soul. And the Bible says, a liberal soul shall be made fat. You saw how he fed the angels. That is for another time. Number two, the second reason why we should get wealth or God is going to make us get wealth is establishing so that he can establish his covenant through the preaching of the gospel. So that God can establish his covenant through the preaching of the gospel. In Mark chapter 13 verse 10, Jesus made this powerful statement. He says, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. Then the son of man would come. Jesus was saying that until the gospel has has been published among all nations. And how are we going to publish the gospel in all nations? Unless his people have the wealth and they become the tool for the propagation of the gospel. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. So through our wealth, God desires the gospel to reach all men by putting up church buildings. And we need to build multi-purpose church buildings. Amen. Amen. Multi-purpose church buildings that have a, they, they, they should have a place for children's service, have a place for youth service, have a place for adult service. We need to build it so that generations yet unborn will not be lost. If you go to Europe today, the church in Europe, they've lost all their young men and women. Why? Because when the elderly people were growing, they didn't make provision for the young people. It is important the future of tomorrow, the young people. Hallelujah. And so we need the resources to build houses for these people or church buildings for all these people. We need resources for church planting. Amen. And <laughs> one, of, one of our pastors, you know, I remember that young man, he used to live with me. And, uh, and no, the, the people who live with me, oh, they, 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 or who work close to me, I, I, I find out from them whether they tight. I find out from them when we do fundraising, we raise monies for any, any project. I, I, I ask them, you know, that, that there are times I'll be going with my driver and I'll say, hey, when we did the fundraising, how much did you give? Let me know. It's between you and God, but I'm your pastor. Let me know. And you tell me if it's not good. I said, this one, it's not good. This doesn't bring the results you need. And by the grace of God, as they've listened to me, God has been blessing them. And I remember this young man who lived with me. And, you know, now he's, he's working in Kumasi. 
Recently, he went to see his, uh, the, our bishop in Kumasi. He said, I want to have a Perez chapel. I want to pastor a Perez chapel because he's one of our part-time pastors. He said, but I don't, want, I don't want you to worry. I don't want the church to worry. Uh, my wife and I, we've gone for our resources. We've gone to take money from our resources we've gone to rent a place we've bought the instruments for the place etc so his bishop came to town his bishop said no no but we, we the church must do something for the people because they they, they have i said how much have they contributed he says they've put in over sixty thousand ghana cities just to have the church the church must do something so i called this my son i said yes i lent he said don't put anything in it he said, God has blessed me, and this is all I can do, even though it's a sacrifice, but I want to do it. That will be your story. Give me a believing amen. Today, he started a church. They are in, they, they are in a hotel. They've taken a, you know, a hotel hall, something like that. Air conditioned, seats, instruments, everything, and they are doing the church there. And that is going to be your story. You are coming to the place where it will no longer be a time where we will talk about the house you built. We will be talking about the church you built. Your amen didn't come out. I said, we are coming to the place. We are no longer going to talk about the car you got. We are going to talk about the cars you gave. I thought you would say, yes, I received it. We are coming to that place. It's no longer going to be about you because God would have so blessed you, you have more than enough to support other people. May that be your testimony in Jesus' name. You know, recently when I was doing the series on uh, 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 um, We Are At War, and I talked about if you have a house, you know, one of the members who has a house in Ho, you know, he said, I have this house. I go there once in a while. I can give you three bedrooms in that house. I have a land in my father's village, but I, I want to give that place to you. Go and build a church in that place. I'll tell you, that is going to be your story. God is so going to empower you, you will be able to give without struggle. May that be your, your story in Jesus' name. May you come to the place where you can give sacrificially. It will cost you, but you give it smiling. I say you give it doing what? Ah, why? Are you annoyed with me? So why are you not smiling? I say smiling and you are not smiling. So let me see you smiling. Say I will give smiling. Amen. We can't have churches in every place if the people of God do not have the money to fund church planting efforts. But we are going to get into those places. We are going to plant a church. We are going to build a church in every city, every town, every village. And it's because you will be the vessel that God will use to support that. Give me an amen. We are not going to wait for outsiders coming from outside somewhere outside this country to come and do it from this country we are going to build it here we are going to go into other countries with the monies from this country and we are going to do exploits if you can hear me give me a believing amen you know the last time when i returned from uh, 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 mombasa i told you that one of the biggest buildings of our cousins in mombasa you remember of our cousins in Mombasa was built by one man amen give me a believing amen <laughs> we need the money to hold mass crusades and for that to happen the people of God must be empowered and they must understand the reason for that to be done television stations in various nations Bible translation and I'm glad to announce to you that as a church we are part of we support Ghana Bible Society. Amen. We also support Ghana Institute of Linguistics, Literacy, and Bible Translation. Every month we support them. We need to be able to do more than that. Amen. We also support Tio Vision. Tio Vision is the group that puts Bible on cassettes. We support them every month. Beloved, we need to come to the place where in every region in Ghana, we have a special Perez school. Every region in Ghana and from the regions we will go to the districts. Every region we should have a special Perez school. Not an ordinary school. You know last year the best student in the northern region is from our school in Damango. 
from our school in Damango. The Perez Pipretri. Amen. The best overall student in the northern region from our school. Hallelujah. And we need to have such special schools in all the communities. Amen. You know, very soon we should be party for the less privileged in society. For us in Perez Chapel, we shouldn't be doing it only at Christmas. Every quarter, every two months, every month. In fact, we should be able to organize a party in the community to bless the people in the community. And that is going to be our story. Sister, you know what I'm talking about. When you, when you started, you were size 8. Now you are size 14. And you are still keeping the size 8. My brother, when you started your suit, you were wearing size 40. Now you are wearing 46. You, you, you are still keeping the size 40. And, and, and you are not growing any younger. You are... Give me a believing amen. <laughs> and so we've got to market Jesus through the gospel. Number three, the third reason why we must have wealth is to display the love of God. Amen. To display the love of God. In Psalm 35 verse 27, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God has pleasure when we are blessed and highly favored. Amen? God has pleasure in it. I'm not saying that every one of God's children is walking in the fullness of this. I'm not saying that in other nations there is no persecution. I'm not saying that in other places people are not suffering. But I'm saying that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his people. He desires for you to be prosperous. Amen. Amen. I said God desires for you to be prosperous. Hallelujah. Jesus made a very powerful statement when he was talking to the people about the Holy Spirit. He said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, he said, if you then, even as you are in tree, I'm not reading from the tree Bible, I'm going to give you my, inter my interpretation. Or try. Even you, as you are, being evil as you are, even if you then, even as you are, know how to give good and advantage and advantageous gifts to your children. This is the amplified. How much more will your father, who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give good and advantageous things to those who keep on asking? So Jesus was saying, even you, as you are, even you, as you are, even with that, you want to see your children blessed. Even with that, when your children look good, you stand back and say, wow. This morning when mommy, you know, when she finished dressing, I said, you look like my wife. It's my money you've been chopping. Look, look at how fresh you are looking. Amen. And then when she came and she was leading the church to sing, I remember that at the time I met her, she used to sing. Now she married me, and because I'm in the house, she doesn't sing anymore. Those days, as she used to disturb me in the morning, she would be cooking breakfast, and she would be singing, the Lord is good. And then my head, my head would be like this. And in the afternoon, I would be listening to her from the kitchen, she would be cooking, and she would be singing, and her voice is small, and she would be singing. And by the time she brings the food, we hear me cry. She has finished me completely. It's our translation. Now, when, when she settled in the house, she's all the voice, I don't know where it's gone. But the Bible tells us that Jesus, though he was rich, became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. God loves us. Tell somebody, God loves us. The fourth reason why you must be rich is we are blessed to be a blessing to the church. We are blessed to be a blessing to the church. God said to Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 2, He said, I will make of you a great nation, 
and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. God said to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. Listen to me. God doesn't just want you to be blessed. He wants you to become a nation. What it means is that God wants you to become an institution. Amen? He wants you to become an institution. What do I mean by an institution? You are the owner of a company. The owner of a clinic. The owner of a school. Oh, when they mention your name, there are houses that are attached to your name. There are people whose school fees you are paying. There are people who can say that if it hadn't been for you, where would they have been? That is what it means for you to be an institution. If you are here with me, give me a believing amen. amen. And God does that. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing. When God was taking the children of Israel out of Egypt, he made sure that he took them out and blessed them. He blessed them when they were going. Amen. And the reason why he blessed them when they were going was in the wilderness. God wanted to build a tabernacle. He wanted to build a tabernacle. And the reason why God blesses his people is because God always wants to see his work done. Amen. And God will not ask you what you don't have. Are you here with me? Uh, you, your, 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 yes, your yes didn't come up. I said God will not ask you what you don't have. Anytime God starts asking you, it's because you have. And the truth of the matter is, as long as you have this Bible in your hand, for instance, I'm holding this. I can't take any other thing in my hand. If I'm going to receive another thing in my hand, this thing will drop. And so anytime God is asking for something in your hands, it's because he wants to put something better in that hand. You, you, you didn't hear me. I said, anytime God wants to take something from your hand, he asks you to release something which is already in your hand. It is because he wants to take, he wants to put something better in your hand. And by the end of this year, may there be a heavenly exchange. May God bring you into a place of greatness and a place of favor, a place where it will be more than enough, where you will be a testimony. Give me a believing amen. And so God delivered them and brought them into the wilderness so that they could build for him. Hallelujah. So that they could build for him. Number five, we are blessed to meet the needs of needy people in the church. Needy people in the church. Listen to me. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says, But whoso has this world's good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? He's talking about Christians here. He says you can't be blessed. And you see, people should never attend a church like this and go home and not know what they, they will eat. Did you hear me? I said people should never attend a church like this and go home and not know what they are going to eat. It shouldn't happen. But how can we know that you have need if you don't belong to a cell? That is why you must belong to a cell. Tell somebody belong to a cell. Because, you see, you can be in it and we won't know. But if you are in a cell, in each cell, there are 12 to 15 people, 10 to 12, at most 15 people. And so in there, your leader, you can go to your leader and tell your leader, today, boss, emunye, it's not good for me. Amen. Today the Lord is my source. But uh, let the Lord be merciful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And you should be able to do that because listen to me. You shouldn't attend a church like this. Tell somebody you shouldn't attend a church like this. And sleep hungry. Amen. Listen. If you are sleeping hungry. Then you too, you didn't do well. Because you didn't make us know. Because we love you. Because the word of God tells us when we are doers of the word. It says, he who has this world's good and sees his brother have need. This Christmas. It shouldn't happen that you don't have anything to celebrate with this Christmas. Let us know. Amen. 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 By getting in touch with your cell leader. Tell somebody, get in touch with your cell leader. 
Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that we can't shut our bowels of compassion on you and say that the love of God dwells in us. God has resourced us as individuals to be a blessing to you. The person sitting by you may be a managing director, you don't know. The person sitting by you may be a parliamentarian, you don't know. The person sitting by you may be a millionaire, you don't know. And so let your cell leader know. And then we will take care of you. Amen. So the, the, he's talking to saints here, Christians here. He says we don't close our bowels of compassion against a needy Christian. Otherwise we are not showing the love of God. So God expects us to use part of our wealth to relieve the needy in the church. Amen. And so if you don't show compassion to a needy brother. Listen. And that's why you have got to open your eyes. There are people who come to church and probably every Sunday for the past three or four weeks they are wearing the same shirt. Why did God make you observe it? Because he wants you to give him another one or two. Amen? And if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to distribute it, you bring your clothes, you bring it to the church and don't bring any clothes you don't like. We don't want the one that this place is torn and the back no 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 we want the one that you like the one you wear to church the one that is looking good amen you know if you if you understand uh, yes if you want to clap please do it well there are times i've gone to the shop and bought clothes that i wanted and when i just bought it no in the shop no god told me this one is for yours in team this one is for and there are times some of the clothes I, I look at the quality and, and God is telling me to give it to some pastor in some village hey how is he going to take care of and God will ask me I, I, is it your concern <laughs> if he wears it once and is destroyed it doesn't matter for God he wanted to bless somebody and he needed a vessel to use and he used me amen that will be your story it's not just about you. Tell somebody it's not just about you. Amen. So if you see the needs in the lives of people in the church, which you can easily meet, don't fail to meet them. Amen. Otherwise, you'll be an irresponsible user of God's money. And there are some brethren who want others to meet their luxuries. That is not what I'm talking about. I said meeting your needs, not your luxuries. But you, you don't have your shirt is wine. And somebody is giving you another one and say, I, me, I don't like, I don't like green shirts, I like white. Ha! Your shoe, the heel, sister, it's like that. You have, you have developed bow legs by force. And another sister is giving you a shoe and you are saying, me, I like a, a wine shoe. I don't like a black shoe. Ha! That sister or brother is not meeting your luxury. He's meeting you. Give me an amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, he's not meeting. And, and the saddest part is that there are some Christians who can't even accept help from the brethren. They are so full of themselves. If, if, if you give them something, they ask you, did I tell you I needed anything? You take it. There are times people have given me things and I didn't need it. But there is somebody who needs it. And God knows that I'm in touch with somebody who needs it. And so you should be able to accept help. Or you should be able to receive. A lot of us know how to give but we don't know how to receive. Amen. Tell somebody learn to receive. And it's, it's equally unchristian to refuse help from Christians who offer it. So when Christians help, it is not polite for you not to appreciate it. Amen? Because if you don't appreciate it, it's also a misconduct. And some of us don't know how to say thank you. You've got to learn to say thank you. Tell somebody, learn to say thank you. Hallelujah. It is the right of the believer to do good to another brother, just as it's the right of the believer to receive hospitality from a caring or sensitive brother. If through pride you reject the char charitable act of a brother, you have sinned as far as I am concerned. Amen. Some, some brethren are so blessed 
they can easily throw occasional parties for some distressed brethren in the church. There are some who can do parties for some distressed brethren. There are some of the brethren Sunday after church, they don't know what they will eat. And there are some of you Sunday, you can bring a snack, you can bring something prepared and say, hey, those that are in need, let the church, you know, and then be a blessing to them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians 16, and if you have a Bible and the Bible you are using belongs to you, underline it. Verse 15, it says, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, uh, Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. He says these people have an addiction. Their addiction is to minister to the saints. Let me share the sixth and the last one and then our land. Beloved, God prospers the believer to meet the needs of the needy in society. One of the reasons why God will bless you is for you to meet the needy in society, not only in the church. In Galatians 2.10, it says, Only they would that we should remember the poor. The same that I was also forward to do. Paul was saying that the early church, the council in Jerusalem, said they should remember the poor. We should have compassion for the poor and meet their needs. Amen. The Christian is not supposed to be a thief but he's supposed to be a provider of the needs of the poor in society. In Ephesians 4.28, he says, Let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give him that needs. So he should work. As Christians, we must be workers, hard workers. Amen? And that means that you will not steal at work. You will not steal from your boss. The Bible says we should not steal, that we, may, we should work with our hands, that we may be a blessing to others beloved god wants to prosper us these are some of the reasons why god is going to prosper us he will fulfill his covenant in your life he will use you to fulfill it on the face of the earth he will use you to help build this church he will use you to make sure you meet the needs of the people in the church who don't have and he will also use you to meet the needs of the needy in society by now your head let us pray If you are here today and your sins have not been forgiven, I want to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven. You want to say, Lord, I want my sins forgiven. Lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. You'll never be the same. You want God to forgive you your sins. Yes, thank you, my friend. Thank you. You want your sins forgiven. Yes, thank you, my sister. You want your sins forgiven. Lift up your hand. I'm going to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. With your hand lifted, will you please stand? You want your sins forgiven. Yes. If your hand is lifted. Yes. Will you please stand? If your hand is lifted, please stand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If your hand is lifted, please stand. Yes, you want your sins forgiven. With your, if your hand is lifted, please stand. Will you take your Bible, your bag, your purse, and walk to me in front here? You want your sins forgiven. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. Never be the same. Glory to Jesus. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Glory to Jesus. You'll never be the same. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Will you please lift up one hand? We're going to pray. And if you're watching me by television, listening by radio, you can also pray this prayer with me. It's your prayer. I'm helping you to pray. Let's pray. Say, dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You rose for me. Come into my life. Make my life a testimony to those who know me. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your chest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we commit your people into your hands. We ask that you establish them like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Bishop Charles Aginasari's books are a must-read for every Christian everywhere. Easy to understand, yet deeply edifying and thought-provoking, his books touch on important issues facing the modern Christian today, such as evangelism, money, prayer, marriage, addiction, sex, and etiquette. Find the answers. Visit azaliabooks.com as well as Perez Chapel Bookshop, Jowla Junction, Accra, and other leading bookshops.